And welcome back. Today we are flying out one of the yaks of all time. It's the Yak 1 at 2.3. But before we get started, thank you to all my Patreons. And to everyone looking to buy something from the store. I have a discount link in the description. No decal yet. Still nothing. But it's almost done. It's looking pretty damn good. And I'm actually getting pretty excited to publish it. So stay tuned for it. But for now, it is just a discount link. No decals when you buy anything. But what about the Yak 1? It's definitely pretty good. It's not amazing. It's not horrible. It's not bad. It's not mediocre. It's just good. The problem is you are a Yak. Uh, we had the Yak Maneuverability, Standard Yak Maneuverability, and you are at 2.3, which makes it so that you will be running into b 9 es And normally when you run into a b 9 you can easily dogfight it in any other Yak. The problem is, at lower BRs, not really the case. Because you fire face planes like biplanes, hyper maneuverable, low tier floaty planes, like the first Spitfires and stuff. And the first Spitfires, they, you don't really want to dogfight those. But just like the B-49Es, you can very handily outrun them. You are an all-rounder in a plane that's kind of occupied by a lot of those hyper-maneuverable planes that you kind of don't want to deal with. And they're very annoying to fight. Planes like the FAU-1A, of course, you can very handily dogfight. Detail for the P-40, the P-400 and all the kind of middle-of-the-road planes. If you run into a P-39, pray, like it's not a fun fight. But in general, you have options versus almost everyone, which makes this thing pretty pretty relaxing. Of course, you are at 2.3. You are kind of just kicking babies off a bridge. But, you know, it's still a yak. It's still pretty good. And even if you run into people that are pretty decent at the game, if they aren't flying something like a P-29, you should be completely fine against them. It's a pretty damn good aircraft. It's just you can't really play it like any other yak. Something like a Yak-1B, which is, well, it doesn't have web, but it actually has more power. And it's basically as maneuverable. I think this one is a little bit more maneuverable, but you also are at a higher BR. And at a higher BR, your enemies become less maneuverable, which means that you can actually start dogfighting people a little bit easier. So, how do we fly this thing? It kind of depends on what you are facing. Most planes you can simply turn with. If you can't turn with it, you can mostly run from it. Of course, except when it's a p 29 n most planes you can you have options of against, which means that you have to approach every engagement a little bit differently. The only given I can give you is most planes you don't really want to head on. You have the performance advantage in most cases and you only have well the 120 mil in the nose and you don't have beresins, you have a normal ass Shakas guns, which means that your volume of fire in the head on isn't particularly stellar, but you also don't really need it, but it's mostly in the head ons. Not really worth trading, not really worth sticking too long. Just make sure you don't hit, get hit. And if you don't get hit in the head-on, you should be fine against most of your enemies. No, your screen didn't freeze. That is me tabbing out. So I have this teammate that's kind of following me around. Something I'm not really fond of. Because he is just going to be wasting his time. Sure, he's covering me. But by engaging the same guy in a manner like this. Basically, if I kill the guy, he doesn't get anything. And I'm feeling rushed because I want to get my kills in. So I get a crit in. I'm going to loop up and over. This guy just flies by and he rips his wings off. Thank you for the coverage, my guy. But it really wasn't necessary. But that's my wingman down. So now I can actually start flying against the enemies. Without having to worry about well, some guy covering my six. Which means that I basically don't have to think about my engagements. We are going to do something a little bit unorthodox here, however. Because you can see the F2A, which is a plane you don't want to dogfight. P63, 36, sorry. Also don't want to dogfight it. And the other P36, well, the exact same way. So he goes head on. He dodges a little bit too soon. And I'm going to be able to get my nose on somewhat. But I underlead and I miss. I am at an energy disadvantage versus these guys. And they have a lot more maneuverability than me. So what can I do other than simply run away? I'm going to be baiting them on my 6. I'm going to be trying to bait them down low. To let them lose some energy. And then the second they break off to go for someone else. I will switch. And I will start coming in. And start shooting at them. So that guy goes down. I'm still at a pretty bad disadvantage. But because we have the number advantage. He is not really able to go for me. I notice him going for someone else. I'm in instantly going to pitch up again for him. And we are instantly going to kill him. Now again. If this is like 3v2. Or 2v2 even. And I start doing that shit. I am simply dead. If that guy actually has a little bit bad target prioritization. And he goes for me instead of the guy that is above him. And that's actually getting shots on him. Then he will kill me. 
and then it turns into a 2v1 and he is definitely less maneuverable so it's a fight that he's probably going to be losing so be careful of that don't start to mimic that when it's actually when you don't have the numbers advantage because you are going to be looking at a very fat l very very quickly now these two planes not really much of a chance i just have an energy advantage if they try to pitch up they die if they don't pitch up they might get shots on with their gunners but they don't even manage to do that can't really blame them however because those planes definitely do not stack up against what i am flying right here and here we have a p-39 well there was a p-39 he goes head on he doesn't dodge and he simply dies all the p-39 in the kill feed also dies who do i want to engage well, the other three P-39s that are also flying about here. Very popular plane, extremely powerful, however very much misused. I will start flying that thing out very soon here. So that thing does have very, very good low speed control, very good flaps. So this kind of energy trap is something I can do once because I have the energy advantage. If I miss my shot, if I mess this up, he will actually start out climbing me. Right now, I'm on the six somewhat of the other P-39. He's going to win that fight in the long run, so I'm going to break off. And I'm going to get rid of this guy right below us. While we are going to go down below. I'm going to be making this a little bit of a higher speed turn. He is so busy trying to run an energy trap. So busy trying to do a raid fight. That he's actually just hanging from the air. And he makes himself a sitting duck. Always react to what your enemy is doing. Because he could have very easily gotten a shot on us. And all he had to do was simply react to me diving down. And he could have cut off my flight path. And I probably wouldn't have had a very good time. Two of my teammates crash. Which is... Pretty ideal because I want to get some dogfights in. P400 which is basically a P39. And, except uh, it has a pretty damn shitty engine. The P400. I tried to fly it the other day. And if you are going to go into dogfights. With equal energy versus a P39. It takes quite a few turns to actually get shot down. However it doesn't have any engine power. And in a normal match you will start below people. And then that thing starts becoming extremely painful to fly. We go ahead on with a P36. Not really an issue. I can very easily stall him out here because he's simply going too slow. However, there's an SBD coming in with gun ports and he starts spraying from like 15 kilometers away. So I already know that I'm not going to be stalling myself out in front of these two guys. They're both still spraying at me. Not really a fan of this, but the P36, because of his position together with the SBD, makes this an, in, an unwinnable fight and I'm not going to be taking it. So I'm going to be climbing for a little bit. I'm going to wait for my teammates to come in. And if I didn't have teammates, I would have just kept this climb up for a little bit longer. And eventually I will be able to run an energy trap on them. But I'm not going to be dogfighting two planes at once. That both basically don't stall out. The P-36 decides that it's a good idea to go straight vertical. Basically stall himself out. I almost fell for the bait. But I don't need to take it because someone is pitching up right for him. He's getting shot at. And down he goes. I'm not even going to worry about the SBD. I'm going to dogfight the P-36. So I actually get some decent fights in. So I'm going to be diving on him. I'm going to be cutting him off. And he's completely oblivious. So we just click him out of the air. Gamer down. On to the next one. And it's the SBD from earlier. I believe at least. Well it is an SBD. And he is going to go head on with a Key 43. Key 43 going near airfield. The Key 43 is extremely bad against flak. I mean what prop is good versus flak. But the key 43, it's very likely you get your ailerons one shot. And then you can't roll anymore. And when you can't roll anymore, the AA is just going to absolutely hammer your ass. So, we go ahead on with the SPD. He's too slow to pitch up. We just drop on top of him. And down he goes, just like that. And again, I like to be somewhat low-ish in the Yak 1. I'm not really going to say don't climb at all. It's always good to have some altitude in the bank. But I'm trying to force fights low where my performance is relatively better. I break off of the 109 because I'm already forced. I'm already committed to the dive. And then I lose my awareness for a second. And then some guy comes in from an off angle. A little bit bad target prioritization. I really shouldn't have taken that shot. But at the same time I felt like it's low tier. I'm just here to kill people. And I am going to be well, doing exactly that. I'm not going to be playing it too try hardly. This also makes for some better content. Because well you might actually get jumped. You might actually get some interesting fights. Other than fighting everyone on in my terms. And winning every fight with two fingers in my nose. Not really an ideal kind of scenario. At least not for the video. So we reverse the guy. We simply just out turn him. He couldn't really do much other than run an energy trap. But by the time that I see him. I mean the performance of that plane is not good enough. If I play it right. 
he can't really do much. So I'm going to be cutting throttle. I don't want to overspeed. And who do I engage first? It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to kill the easiest target. I mean, at least I'm going to crit the easiest target. Because I just want to get these numbers down. I'm not really too worried about what plane. Because I can dogfight all of these except for the B49E. Which is why I'm going for him next. He's however completely oblivious. And we also just take his wing off very handily. B49F on R6. But it doesn't matter how bad or good your plane is. If you are just going to be ignoring me with your smoke out. So we just hold the trigger down. We set him on fire. And we take him down real easily. Hurricane is then in front of us dogfighting with the P29N. But the Hurricane is already damaged. We crit him as we came in. I don't need to take that head on. It's a Sea Hurricane with the 420 mils. Not really feeling that head on. So we are just going to go straight up and over. Drop the flaps to get the shot a little bit earlier. Because I know there's a teammate coming in. He turns into a frisbee. And he manages to take himself out for dinner. And starts hugging a tree. Kill number 4. On to the next one. Actually the last game and it's going to be a full game. A pretty long game. 6 kills in total. I know this is 190 coming for me. And I know he's very slow. So I'm going to go a little bit further to the right. So it's going to be harder for him to pull into the head-on. But he switches then to my teammate. And he forces the head-on with him. I'm going to be looping behind him. I'm not sure how badly damaged he is. But with a 190A1. I am not going to be risking it. I'm going to be clicking him out of his cockpit. And down he goes. I'm not sure how badly damaged my teammate is. Call it a steal if you want. But I'm not going to be risking a 190A1 that goes RTB and then mops up my entire team. Especially considering the state of my teammate. Condor in orbit. Not really worried about that. I'm going to be ignoring him for the most part. Unless he directly flies over me. So I can very easily take him down. But I don't really want to waste my ammo too much on him. Because well the Condor is pretty tanky. It's not... Not a B-29, but it's pretty tanky for this BI. I only have one Shavak that really does damage to it. And Shavaks aren't that potent versus bombers. So I'm just going to be leaving him alone. And I'm going to be engaging these guys that are engaging one of my friendlies. Yak-1 is on the 6th of the P-51. He clicks him out of the air. And we are going to be trying to intercept the P-51 before he kills our teammate. So we are just going to dive on him. My squad mate also goes down, which is very annoying. But he's keeping it slow. So I can actually come in and help him out. Very often what I see is when someone is in trouble. Someone needs help. What they do is they dive straight to the deck when their team is above them. This just makes it so that it's 20 times harder for me to help you. Which ends up well, killing us both if I try to come. If you keep him high, you make him a very easy target for me. Because he is slow. And you don't sacrifice all your speed in the progress. P29 on the deck. I do want to be kind of careful of it, but I'm going like 550. Not really too worried, and I also have two teammates right above me. So I do a loop over, and look at the speed this guy still has. Sure, I'm catching him. But this guy has been ground pounding, I've been diving. And then he does the bad thing and he goes up, but the P-39 is nothing to laugh at. And I think everyone that has flown it, and especially the Russian one, the P-39N0, the... I'm not even going to... Attempt to pronounce that. The premium uh, tier 3 one. It is ridiculous. And you really notice this. When you run into planes like the BF-109 F4. That you are. Basically as fast as. And completely shit on in a dogfight. Now your guns aren't amazing. But you know that's something you can work around. Considering the performance is just that good. We go ahead on with the P40. I'm trying to keep him like behind the mountain. But I believe he cooked his engine or something. He's not smoking, he's not really damaged, and before he really dies, I'm just going to spray him with uh, 7 mils. I instantly get a crit, and he also proceeds to hug a tree. What do we do now? Well, we are looking around, and there's a P63, and I think to myself, wow, I'm actually going to get a fight in here. So what do I do? I go under him to deny him the angle, he needs to break off. He actually does that, he resets, and he's going to make this pretty hard, because I'm only going 370. So we just do it again. And I expected him to break off again, but no, he actually commits. And he also hugs a tree. Good job, mister, whatever your name is. We hit you with the L. And we go straight into the last portion of this match. And I do want to apologize for the fact that the footage today is kind of mid. I got like 60 kills. I didn't die. And uh, I got like one or two kills every, every other match. Like on average, which isn't very good. I, I couldn't get any good footage. I really couldn't. I, I tried. 
this game is simply too stacked or this BR is too stacked and I was winning every match without doing anything so then I switched to the 190A1 and I got my footage done in like what five or six games and uh, there you have it when you play on the opposite side uh, you're gonna have much better luck so today the 56 to 1 or whatever I have is not a flex it really isn't because you're seeing the footage I'm not exactly doing anything very stellar there's just nothing going on this BR is kind of stacked like, for Russia they're just winning everything and but at the end of the day it's not as depressing as flying the A-35 so I could be flying that and no I'm not gonna be taking it out it's probably one of the most horrendous planes you can actually fly I'm not sure if it gets a bomber spawn if someone could let me know in the comments that would be fantastic but the A-35 is just I don't have words for it it's actually completely dreadful this guy thinks that the A-35 is fine it might be as like a bomber but if you're gonna try to fly that thing as a fighter I got bad news for you it is absolutely horrendous so what are we doing now I'm looking for the last guy but well, there's two guys left one is on the runway and one is somewhere on the map I have this MiG-3 in my team who is a pretty low level I believe I believe it's like level 16 or something and I'm not really gonna rely on him but having someone around means that the one, the, the last guy, I'm not sure what it is, I think it's an ME410, might actually engage us, or at least his friend might. But there we go. Oh, there we go, level 15. One of the enemies bails out. And uh, I was going to say kill ground, and there we have it. Anti air at 2 kilometers, and it's just mid map AA, and I absolutely despise it. Why is that shit a thing? Why do we have to deal with mid map AA? Like, alright, let's look at it this way, right? We already have the main airfield, which gives you like a kill box of 5 kilometers in diameter, probably 6. And then you also have the runway itself, making it even wider, so it's probably like 13... I said diameter, I mean radius. So we have like a diameter of like 13 to 14 kilometers, which is an AA bubble. Next to that, which is basically... Touch, the bubbles are basically touching. There's a second airfield, a small airfield, right next to it. Which means that the bubbles just don't overlap. So if you stay in between it, you can always run to one or either side. Then you also have mid-map AA. So they're basically forcing us at this point to stay on our side of the map. No one is camping it. No one is abusing it. We are just flying and we get absolutely dicked on. And here we are, the ME410. The ME410 climbed to a very high altitude. And he's somewhat trying to engage us. But he's trying to play it too safe. He's in a plane that will not win this fight. He can potentially try to get some shots in. But this is the thing I mentioned in all of my videos lately. Not taking any risk is more risky than taking some risk. He's in a plane that will lose this fight. So if he keeps this up long enough, he will lose. Because I will eventually outclimb him. I will eventually outrun him. And I will most definitely outturn him. The thing is he's already camped the airfield once. Very briefly he just dove to it the second he, what, he was at a disadvantage. We only have 2 minutes 30 left on the clock. And this guy is just going to keep climbing. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. Because he has the ticket advantage. And he doesn't really need to engage us. The thing is, because he plays it so safe, because he's trying so hard to not engage me, because he's trying so hard to win this match by staying alive, he ends up dying. He's gonna start diving on us, but he doesn't even commit to it. So he just sacrificed a lot of speed, and he kills himself. What is your battle plan? If you are going to dive on a plane that will outperform you and you already are in not the best of scenarios, stick to it. Because if you break off, it's going to end up a little bit like this. He sacrificed a lot of altitude, a lot of speed, and then he turned right in front of me. And he, well, he got himself slow in front of a plane that's much more maneuverable and it will outperform it in every sense. So instead of the W, he got hit by the El Bozo. Thank you for playing. See you all in the next one.